Hi, welcome. This is my first video on this channel. I do have a separate channel called Psychology with Dr. Anna, but just to introduce myself if you don't know me, I'm Anna Yudin. I'm a doctor of clinical psychology and a published author. And on this channel, I'm gonna be talking less about psychology and more about the just cozy things in life. So in this video specifically, I'm gonna run through the five best books that I read in 2024. Now the five books I mentioned are not gonna be my favorite books of all time. Actually only two of them are gonna be my favorite of all time. But the rest are just the most influential that I've read this year, the most transformative in terms of the impact they had on my life. And just so you know, it's a mix between nonfiction and fiction. I do like to read both. Sorry if you have a strong preference for one or the other. But let me start with number five. The fifth best book that I read in 2023. Okay, don't judge me. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Now, okay, I don't agree with everything that he said in this book. I don't believe everything he said in this book, but I do think this is a really important book for people like myself who struggle to live in the present moment. He did a really good job of talking about how only the present moment exists. There is no point in thinking about the future or the past or ruminating over them because the present is all that you have. He really emphasized the absolute importance of mindfulness and the futility of worrying about the future or ruminating about the past. And like I said, yeah, there is some woo-woo stuff in here that I was like, eh, this doesn't really seem particularly evidence-based or it's not something I really believe in. But at the end of the day, it is a spiritual book, not a scientific one. And I think it's a valuable one. Coming up at number four, we have The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. This is one that probably a lot of you have read before me. It took me forever to get to this one. And part of it was honestly, all my therapist friends kept recommending it to me. And at one point I just got stubborn and I was like, you know, everyone's recommending this to me. It sounds like it's too mainstream. I don't want to read it. But I'm glad that I did because it really emphasized the importance of taking a somatic approach when working with trauma and how trauma is stored in the body and some interventions for how to release that trauma. So I think it was a very valuable read. It helped me personally in terms of realizing how pivotal it is to soothe my nervous system. It was very scientific. It was rooted in a lot of clinical practice. And so I am a big fan of this one and I would recommend it to others as well. Number three, this is the last nonfiction. As you'll notice, the ones that like really stick with me for the most part are the fiction. But The Upside of Stress by Kelly McGonigal was really good. This is all about how, actually, it's not stress that's killing us, it's how we think about stress. And you might think that this one kind of contradicts The Body Keeps the Score, which The Body Keeps the Score is all about how the long-term effects of stress are killing us. The upside of stress is about how actually stress could be protective and help us in the long run. But the upside of stress was also rooted in a lot of science, and I think it's more up-to-date than The Body Keeps the Score. It really spoke to the importance of mindset. Embracing that hard stuff happens and trying to bounce back from it and trying to make meaning of it and gain support from other people and how we shouldn't be freaking out about stress. As a person who thinks society has gotten too soft these days and we've kind of lost touch with the importance of stress, I found this book to be really valuable and also I found it to sort of soothe my own worries about how stress is going to kill me because ironically, like she talks about in the book, thinking that might actually kill you. But if you can reframe it in your head from stress is this horrible thing that's happening to me that's gonna kill me to stress is an opportunity for me to rise to the occasion, you're obviously going to be far better off than 99% of people. At number two, we have A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This one is definitely a famous bestseller, really well known in the realm of fantasy. It is a series and although I adored this book, it's one of my top favorites of all time, I won't be reading the other books in the series, at least not anytime soon, for the simple fact that it was so long. Yes, it was a very slow burn. I liked the slow pacing, but towards the end I was like, you know what, I just, I kind of want this to be over. I get it. I get it. I'm done now. Okay, but like, 
despite that, I do really appreciate that it really immerses you in the five senses. It's very fancy in terms of like the food and the scents and the places where it takes place. It's like in all these romantic settings in Europe, castles, you know, vampires, witches, demons, romantic, dark. There's even some synesthesia in there. So it really blends the senses. It feels like you can just reach over and feel and taste and smell the senses yourself. And for me, that is actually one of the things that I most value in a book. I want to be transported there. I want the imagery to be very vivid and luscious. And so that is why for me, it was one of the best books. And at number one, we have The Witch and the Czar by Alicia Salnikova Gilmore. This was so good. This might honestly be my favorite book now. So it's a re-envisioning of the Baba Yaga legend of Russia. And it takes place in the, I don't know which age you would call it, but back when they still had a czar, I think like the 18th century, maybe even before that. So in the middle ages. And instead of being this old hag who is scary, Baba Yaga is a middle-aged witch who's very empowered and who basically helps save Russia from an evil monarch. It has the most lyrical, spellbinding voice that I have ever come across. Let me just read you a little bit from the first page so you can see what I mean. When my owl landed on my shoulder, I knew heartbreak was not far behind. It was not that twilight tasted different, though on my tongue the humid spring air had the bitterness of snowfall. It was that even this deep in the Russian forest, dusk bled into the light with infuriating leisure. The clouds had smothered the last of the sun's rays in scarlet. How beautiful is that? That is by far the most beautiful introduction to a book that I've ever read. So. I love it, and actually, if you like this as well, you might enjoy my book, The Curse in Their Veins. I have it here, because my book is also very witchy, goes back in time, um, and the feedback that I consistently get about it is that it does a really good job of transporting people to the setting, which is very magical, and that it's just very vivid in terms of how the description is. So if that sounds like your kind of book, definitely check it out. I would really appreciate it. And by the way, if any of you have already bought and read this book, please leave me a review. It would mean so much. Reviews really do help a ton. So I would love to hear your thoughts on there. Have you read these books? What do you think about them? And please let me know what your favorite books of 2023 were so that I can maybe read them in 2024. Take care.